Uncertainty shows up in almost everything we do. You can think about even the very earliest stages of perception. What we perceive is some representation of what they're in the world, but often there's a lot of uncertainty about what things are and we fill in the blanks, right? So there's uncertainty even in our ability to perceive the most simple things. The term certainty and uncertainty originates from the verb Canada, which means to distinguish or to mark out. So if you see experience as a chaos of information and data, Canada is to distinguish identities. It's the first step towards understanding. It's the first step towards knowledge to, to distinguish one phenomenon from the field of multiple phenomena. In astronomy, uncertainty is desperately important because many of the measurements that we make are very, very difficult. And so estimating uncertainty is just about as important as making the measurement itself. And for probably the last hundred years of kind of state of the art observational astronomy, measurement of uncertainty has gotten more and more important. People vary a lot in how much uncertainty bothers them. There's a personality trait almost, it's called intolerance of uncertainty. And that correlates very highly with anxiety. How the brain processes this, it sort of processes uncertainty basically in every system of the brain that we have because there's uncertainty in every part of our environment. The simulations get better and better as the data get better because of this cycle where people take their predictive system, which in astronomy is, is, is often a numerical computer simulation, and they make that better as the computers get better, as the data gets better. And in the case of COVID-19 right now, what we suffer from is a tremendous lack of reliable data. And to make predictions in the absence of reliable data is extraordinarily difficult, it's not impossible. While the range of uncertainty is very wide, it's not as wide as we go outside tomorrow and everything is fine, or it's the zombie apocalypse. Literary history certainly has a number of illustrative examples of life during a pandemic. Boccaccio's Decameron is the first text that comes to mind when a number of Florentine nobles gather to tell stories over a 10-day period to sit out the plague. We have a number of truly excellent paradigms to draw from, and I would expect that we will see in the years to come some sustained reflection in a literary fashion on the current crisis and the current uncertainty.